Welcome back and we are talking about handling mixed clan meetings. And Mr. John Nganga, what are the dangers for Christians in clan meetings? If you are a Christian who keeps your Christianity as top secret, confidential, you will go for clan meetings and they will want to please you by, watch, by sacrificing. Oh, come I show you how to slaughter a goat. And the reason you are being slaughtered, you are being shown, is so that you know how to do it religiously. It's not just meat. There is a system, religious system, of sacrificing. And they are not being able to hurt you. They don't know that you are a Christian. So they are just showing you. You know, I still remember going to a Muslim country when I used to, before I retired, I used to cover several countries in Africa. And there was one country, is a Muslim country. When they heard I was going, and we were going to move from the capital city to another one of the depots that, that they were involved in, in that, and you know, in that country, alcohol is banned. You, do, you are not caught before being drunk. You are caught for having a bottle of alcohol. Mm -hmm. So when you are eating in a company guest house, we are eating, one of them just came and showed me a, a, a bottle that was white. You know, it's blank, you can't see any, there are no labels. Says, it's real. What is it? He said, it's white wine. Real, good, good. Uh, they expected me to, uh, to please, to be very happy. Because they have taken a risk of being jailed to smuggle wine for this Kenyan visitor. Oh, I had disappointed them. Told me, sorry, I don't take it. But you are a Kenyan. <laughs> it means every Kenyan they have met nobody drinks. So the way to please a Kenyan is to ensure he has less alcohol. Now, so can you see, they were trying to be good to me. You can imagine how frustrating it was to them to go to the risk of being arrested. Only I told, I told, I told them I can't take So they had to take themselves because they claim to be Muslims, but they still, <laughs> I think the word is claim to be Muslims because they still took it. Now, so you need to understand clearly all that they are not taking a risk for nothing. They did not mean evil. After all, for some I was their boss. They were doing it to make me happy. So it means in the same way, when you are going for a clan meeting, and some of you are Christians, some are not Christians, there is the risk of keeping quiet about your faith. You need to find a way of ensuring your clansmen know you are a Christian. Step number one. Number two, they know what is a no-go zone. There are things you cannot do. These days, you go for cousins' meetings, and then they bring you, you are boys, and they bring you girls in the village. Hey, we have arranged the meeting properly. What is happening? Ah, oh, there'll be girls. Now, <laughs> to convince those girls to come to strangers, we require a lot of effort on their side. They are not doing it because they hate their cousins. They want their cousins to have a good time. Only for you, after all that struggle, say, sorry, 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 I don't sleep with somebody I'm not married to. Now, can you see the risk of the person who has kept quiet about his faith is that he will feel, hey, the kind of trouble these people have gone to. And after all, it's only once. I'll, 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 I'll share a bed with this girl because surely, how do I embarrass my cousins? after all that effort. Obviously, you are choosing to please people against God. Back to the book of James chapter 4. Those who seek to please the world become enemies of God. But they all came from not understanding the idea about mixed clan meetings. Is that one solution is to ensure up front people know your stand, know your values, and because they have no intention of hurting you, they will try to accommodate you. They will say, ah, we want to alcohol. But because Nana is here, why don't we have the alcohol another day? Alternatively, Nana is going to be in that room. We will hide ourselves and go to another room and take the alcohol. So because they are trying to make everybody happy. And it will be quite, a, quite, a, quite an issue. So that's the danger. The danger. The second danger is the danger of feeling because a clan meeting, 
the grandfather, the grandfathers must be obeyed. But those grandfathers are not Christians. So there are things they will talk about, this clan, this and this and this and this and this must be done. Then you feel like, oh, it's my grandfather has talked. If I don't, if I don't, um, if I don't obey him, I am going to end up in trouble. So I better do what he is asking me to do. Otherwise, I will be in a lot of, I will be in a lot of trouble. Um, and you, you need to understand when that is what you are going to, and you are dealing with a, a grandfather, something will will go wrong. That's why earlier we said cowards will burn in hell. Because then you have to do what your grandfather says you do. For example, he will suggest, wait a minute, this clan is very small. Our men must get two wives. Because that we can grow numbers. And uh, that was one of the things our, your great-grandfather had said. So, I'm giving you notice. We, my daughters, please allow your husbands to get second wives. Now, you, and, they, and then they will threaten. If you don't get a second wife, you are not operating within the clan's rules. You are taking a risk. I think that is the kind of scenario the book of Isaiah chapter 8 was talking about. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 11 says, This is what the Lord says to me with his strong hand upon me, warning me not to follow the way of these people. The people of God are being told, are being warned. Don't follow the way of your clan. Goes on. Do not call a conspiracy everything these people call conspiracy. They are in the same clan, but there are things they call evil that are actually not evil. They start talking about pastors and churches and how they are common men and whatever. Mm, yes, 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 yes. You are calling evil what they call evil. The word of God is saying, no, 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 you have a warning. Do not follow the way of these people. Do not call conspiracy everything that people call conspiracy. There are some things that, are, that the clan will call evil, they are also evil. You must agree with them. But be aware their values and their standards are not your standard. So do not call something evil that God calls good because your grandfather has called evil. And then he goes on to say, do not fear what they fear. You uncle fears, hey, the clan of the grandfather, it will kill us, it will finish us. Your grandfather has a right to fear because he's not protected by the blood of Jesus. But you, you know, you are protected by that. So you have a, that was a, do not fear what they fear. So there are things they fear and they are afraid of them until they are calling the witch doctor to try to cleanse us for us not to suffer the, the chira or the consequence of the, of the dahu or the, 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 the evil that has come. But for you, you don't fear what they fear. And then do not dread what they dread. Verse 13 of Isaiah 8. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. Not, you are, not the ancestors. The Lord your God is the one you are going to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. If there is any fear, it must not be a fear of dead ancestors. It must not be the fear of your father. It must be the fear of God. Your father, you honor. God, you fear. And that means your grandfather can tell you to do something. If it is going to be a disrespect on God, you will find a way of honoring your grandfather. Talk in such a way that he will not feel disrespected. But the, under, the bottom line is you are saying you can't do what he is asking you to do. If you cannot stand against your grandfather or your uncle, when he asks you to do something that doesn't honor God, chances are you are fearing what they are fearing, you are dreading what they are dreading. The Isaiah is saying, even if these people are your people, do not be like them. Don't fear what they fear. Do not dread what they dread. So I repeat, verse 11. This is what the Lord says to me with his strong hand upon me, warning me not to follow the way of these people. Who are these people? You are clansmen. Mm -hmm. You need to be aware. 
You are in the world, but not of the world. You are in the clan, but not of the clan. Because you are in the clan, now like you said that you are in the police program, God will expect you to influence them. So you should not pull out of the clan meetings. You should seek to influence the clan meetings. Okay, as we wind up, how can a Christian gain the respect to influence the clan meetings for Christ? Yeah, because that will be very important. Now that we are insisting you must be in the clan, but you must not be mixed up with them. How can you gain respect? Three things. What they ask you, what your grandfather asks you to do, that's okay to do. You'd be the first to do. All of a sudden, you, hey, you mean this Christian boy is so respectful? I asked for a blanket, he was the first one to bring. Because there's nothing wrong with giving your grandfather a blanket. He, 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 I asked for people to come for a meeting, he is the one who came. That way, he will gain the understanding that the only time you say no is where it touches your faith. It was Daniel they talked about. They look for a mirror, they go, I know where you can find him, in relationship with God. So your grandfather needs to understand that you are so obedient, so, so honoring, so respectful, that you do it, and do it on time, and do it in a great way. That will earn you the right to be able to say no. And everybody saying, Jesus is a very difficult man. The grandfather says, no, 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 no. I know why he is not participating. It's because this is not in line with his, with his Bible. And you know he doesn't give in on the issues of the Bible. So he will he'll be the one defending you. So that's the first thing you need to do. What is good to do? Number two, what you say no to, it must be no at any cost. If you say no, and then they threaten to sanction you, then you say, oh, I don't want to do it, but I'll do it because you are forcing me. My friend, they know you are not serious. They know your God is not one who demands honor. So as soon as you give in in an area, you compromise an area, you lose respect. They no longer know. know. So they start saying, even last time, he would have done it. He was just being difficult. So if you want to, you need to make a stand. When you make a stand, make a stand and do not compromise. And then thirdly, seek to be at peace with all men on all issues where it is possible. Thank you so much, Mr. Nganga. We've come to the end of our program tonight. We've been talking about handling missed clans meeting and some of the dangers for Christian in clan meetings. We've read that in Isaiah 8, 11 to verse 13. Have a blessed night. I'm your host, Masikiari. God bless.